Hey guys, this week had an exciting start. On Monday, Blackmagic Design has announced and revealed and released DaVinci Resolve version 16. And at the same time, although without any announcement, Fusion Studio version 16 came along. So I have been uh, trying both of them for the last two days and I just wanted to share with you my findings so far. So in this video I will quickly talk about the installation and some things to watch out for. Um, then I will talk a bit about the features, especially with respect to Fusion. Uh, for those who have been following this channel before, uh, it's all about uh, VFX and motion graphics with Fusion. So for me Fusion is the exciting part of it and then I will tell you also a bit about bugs and problems I have encountered so that you know whether or not you want to go with this better version. Let's jump right in. First of all when you're installing you have probably heard it before and I just ask you to uh, remember it if you are upgrading Resolve you want to make sure you have a backup of your database. Now it is coming as a warning and some people ignore it, but when you upgrade from 15 to 16 or in any Resolve upgrade for that matter, uh, the database is being upgraded as well once you start the new version and from that point onwards you cannot go back. So the database is not backwards compatible. If you want to go back because something is not working, you don't like the beta or whatever, if you go back you need also a backup of the database. It's very quick and easy, you got just go here into um, in Resolve in the projects manager on the side there is here the database and backup database here. I have seen a few suggestions in the forums that you can run Resolve 15 and 16 side by side and uh, the trick that is usually done for that is you can rename your installation folder of Resolve 15 so the, the system folder for Resolve and then once you run the installer for Resolve 16 it will not find the 15 folder and it will create a new folder uh, and you have both installations side by side. I'm a bit hesitant of recommending this process. First of all uh, in case there are any dependencies upgraded uh, like, like external codecs or, or stuff like this uh, that could potentially be an issue uh, but even if that is not the case even if everything runs uh, perfectly clean you can still not use the same database so yeah you have 15 and 16 side by side but if you have uh, if you're upgrading your database and then you actually perform some work in 16 uh, you still can't uh, migrate the database back. For Fusion however things are completely different. If you install Fusion Studio 16 then by default the version 16 is being installed side by side to uh, your previous version. So if you have Fusion 9 and Fusion 16 by default they are both uh, remain intact and you can even even open them at the same time um, and uh, just fun fact Fusion 9 and Fusion 16 running at the same time still take less system memory than DaVinci Resolve. I guess we are in a slightly different category here. Now that being said what has actually happened? The most important announcement around whole or DaVinci Resolve 16 bus uh, was this new cut page that they introduced. So for editing this might be interesting. I'm definitely gonna uh, try it out for example when editing uh, this video perhaps. Let's see. Um, but I'm not 100% sure yet if it will fit my, my workflow. Also a few Resolve FX for the color page have been added and a few um, improvements have been done to Fairlight. With respect to Fusion if you look into the release notes you see that a few tools have been upgraded for GPU acceleration. Now Blackmagic has done that even with Fusion 9 for a while has uh, more, more and more tools um, which now have GPU uh, acceleration and, and this has continued continued and the other important part for Resolve is that the caching is being improved and this was really a bit buggy and slow in Resolve 15 and for my first test even though I haven't done any scientific measurements uh, I can, can confirm this that in the edit page Fusion uh, clips run a bit more smoothly. Unfortunately though it's not all good Unfortunately I had quite a few crashes and one thing which was really interesting I got this error message. Now this is telling me here that I should upgrade my graphics card I guess. 
I don't know, it's telling me I'm running out of GPU memory and I should reduce the timeline resolution. Now for compositing, I think this message makes no sense at all. I don't care what graphics card you have, it's always possible to create a, a composite uh, which exceeds every le memory limit. Think of multipass, think of 3D, think of uh, lots of different pictures composited together, um, whatever. It's always possible to reach the limits of your graphics card. So I expect that GPU acceleration might not work anymore at some point. I expect that things slow down. I don't expect to see a game over message, basically. Um, so yeah, that's a bit disappointing. and. The good thing is though I took the same composite from here, I took it over into Fusion 16 standalone and there I didn't have the problem. Uh, I also increased it a bit, I increased the frame size even more, put it up to 8K just for, for trying, it slowed down and so on, but it didn't crash. So good point for Fusion standalone. All in all I must say Fusion standalone has been really solid in version 16. I haven't seen any uh, problems so far, no, no crashes uh, so far. Um, so all in all I'm pretty happy with Fusion 16. The one announcement from Blackmagic which made me really feel excited and then shortly after disappointed. Excited they have introduced some AI capabilities in DaVinci Resolve and they have introduced to the color page a object removal tool. Now when I heard that I thought immediately great for compositing because you know think of marker removal, think of wire removal, all these paint jobs and so on. Some context aware tools can really um, be, be beneficial. So I would want to have this tool in the compositing tool inside Fusion. Uh, however it's only available in the color page. I'm thinking that perhaps uh, this uh, AI framework um, Blackmagic has maybe not had the chance to introduce it into Fusion standalone and therefore maybe wants to limit it to the resolve capability for now. Um, I hope that it comes to Fusion at some point. That would be really a good thing. Now looking into Fusion standalone, you can see quite some difference here. Uh, the Fusion standalone interface now was completely aligned with the DaVinci Resolve interface. Now this will probably provoke mixed feelings. Some people really love the Fusion 9 interface. It is more flexible. Basically you can reorder um, your layout however you want. Uh, it's, it's really flexible, you can save different layouts and so on. In the Resolve layout, the Resolve GUI is much more restrictive. Um, this is the bad part. The good part I think is since Resolve all in all has a much bigger user base and many people are now excited about Resolve and Fusion, I think having the two tools aligned um, will really help uh, for the future of Fusion. Because at the end the tool can only survive if they're users and um, having this link between Resolve and Fusion and the uh, ability to move quickly between both applications, having the standalone application and having uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, as the whole package um, is, is a good thing I think and so I can understand that Blackmagic doesn't want to maintain two different user interfaces for basically the same Fusion functionality. Even if you feel it is a bit restrictive there are still a few things what you can do in Fusion standalone which is not available in Resolve. For example you can here um, open a new floating viewer or floating window uh, and then as a detached window you can still do whatever you want. So and you can even open more than one detached window. So if you have a second or third monitor or whatever you can um, move over a separate window and can put in whatever uh, view you want to see. So that flexibility is still there. Also if you have a separate monitor, uh, if you have it connected via a decklink card um, then like in Resolve you can uh, use it as your video output. Um, on the other hand, if you just have a second monitor connected to your regular graphics card, you can still use it for full screen output in Fusion. Uh, there's a setting here in um, in the in the uh, video output settings where you can basically direct the video output to a monitor. So you can get full screen output even without any of the Blackmagic, Decklink uh, or whatever um, monitor cards. Otherwise Yes, the layout looks a bit different. Functionality is still exactly the same. 
some of the GPU acceleration seems to work from a first impression, although again I haven't done scientific measurements on this, but all in all I'm happy. And from two days of use so far, I say Fusion Studio seems to be uh, working fine. Now, so bottom line, it's not the huge upgrade for Fusion. I think the huge part is more in the editing and Fairlight capabilities. Uh, but from a Fusion perspective, some of these enhancements are supposed to be good. Again, in Resolve, unfortunately, I couldn't experience it to the fullest because of these bugs, which I hope are being resolved in the next beta releases. But all in all, I think it's a good direction uh, once the bugs are resolved or at least um, become less I'm, I'm very happy to migrate okay this was my experience so far tell me about yours uh, are you upgrading if so what is your experience uh, is it working for you is it crashing whatever this kind of um, feedback can be useful for others watching this channel so uh, please let us know in the comments and enjoy Resolve 16, Fusion 16, whatever it is, and I see you in one of the next tutorials.